Hello. Um, I promise you that I will send you information about how to uh, add texture to your pastels, to the underpainting. And there's different ways. Uh, I will give you different uh, alternatives, but um, there's no right and wrong. It's something that I want to add for the extra thing to my painting, something different. Um, I have to um, in some way warn you that it's an extra hurdle what, that we are going to deal with during the painting process. So it's perfectly okay to keep on using the the paper, the sand pa sanded paper that you used before, and you can follow me step by step, step perfectly fine. Um, but um, what I use the surface is any thick paper. This is a fluid watercolor paper. Uh, it's, it's gone. Uh, as you know, I want to uh, work with 12 on 12 because it's easy for me to create a series and I already have some frames like that. Uh, you use any um, size that you want and as you can see this one is was created on those, this paper and I hope you can appreciate the texture here, here, here. Okay. So I will show you how to make these uh, surfaces. Another thing that I really like is this acrylic paper. Uh, it's uh, linen finished, so you can see already, like a, I don't think it's easy to appreciate on the camera, but it has a little bit of um, canvas uh, texture. It's thick enough, so I can apply uh, the uh, ground. And, uh, for instance, another thing that I like to use, okay, there's so, oh, here, um, is this uh, canvas paper, too. It's a different uh, canvas on this canvas artboard. Uh, anything that is a little bit um, thick and sturdy. I want to show you how, oh, this is really thick, maybe thicker than I never used a friend give it to this to me okay so and of course you can use the your paper or any paper um that you've been using before i like the 400 and you can use add extra texture to this one for me i think it's cheaper to grab this and add my texture uh so this is regarding the papers so now let's see uh, about the ground. I love these. Let's take this so you have a better view of that. Uh, the Golden Fine Pumice Gel. Uh, this is uh, like a gesso plus uh, pumice uh, powder. Okay, I like it. It's handy. It stays uh, in a nice um, um, uh, how do you say um it's still wet after maybe two years i already bought it's not drying so i love it and it's handy and i have it whenever i, I want another way of doing it is um using gesso mm -hmm. and uh pumice pumice stone mm -hmm. so you're gonna be preparing your own uh, like the golden, but you're going to be preparing with gesso and pumice. This is a clear gesso, but you don't have, uh, you don't need clear gesso. Um, uh, you can use the regular one. This is nice when you, it's a little bit uh, of a tooth, but it's nice when you already have uh, the drawing and you uh, still want to see the drawing through. Otherwise, the drawing is going to be covered. Uh, I usually uh, start adding my texture just as it comes here. Yes, it's a kind of a grayish, whitish color. Let me see if I can find one of my...
and prepare them yes uh, can you see the texture we're gonna be adding uh, and let them dry and when I need I can uh, paint the under painting any color that I think appropriate for the design I'm gonna do uh, but uh, since uh, I want you to really see what's going on this time I'm gonna stain the ground first so you can see it uh, while I'm creating the texture of adding to my surface um, there's no right or wrong I, I I prefer to do these and then stain it remember we use it um, um, the pastels and then alcohol or I also like to use the golden fluid uh, this is acrylic but any water-based medium will help some people even use oils I don't use oil uh, simply because I, I feel that um, the acrylics um, dries very fast okay so I'm gonna start creating one of these um, these textures so first I have a jar I will add some of these ground And, as I mentioned before, I'm going to add some pigments. Any, um, water-based medium will help, even uh, ground pastels if you want. For me, it's more economic and easily to add this golden. And since we are going to be painting this time, um, these yellow flowers, I'm going to add an orange bright color, but um, any, some people ask, how do you decide the color? Usually complementaries works very well. Um, if it has a lot of darks, I go for a dark value, any color. And if I, but sometimes I put a different color, a color that I see on, or I envision in my composition that will work well. And I, I like it to pick through because once we put um, an underpainting, the underpainting will set the mood of my whole painting. And that's what I like that is picking through. I'm not covering it 100%. That's why it's an underpainting. Um, it's going to show up in different places. And it's going to also help me with the harmony and the rhythm of my painting. So you can see that here I have a nice orange color. When it dries, it might uh, look even darker. But um, I, I think it's going to look good, but you can choose even purple or a, the green of the background. Uh, usually I avoid a green because um, if I'm going to paint yellow, because uh, the yellow will be affected and it's going to look a little bit greener. And this time I want a, a happy yellow uh, more canyon. So as you can see, I'm just covering the whole page, but you don't have to cover the whole page. I'd like to leave a little bit of that canvas. And maybe this, um, so there you go. So I, I hear, I don't even think about the positioning of the elements i'm just covering leaving some areas oh i have for one more okay so i have left here uh, i don't throw away things 
So um, now I grab one of my favorite tools that I, I like to add these. So I start to create some organic lines, mm, uh, different kind of lines and and sometimes then I regret it and I say, oh, this is just in an area that I need a hard edge and look at I have this. But well, this is the way. So here I leave it for for one uh, night or a few hours overnight is the best so do this uh, ahead of time of the class when it's dry we can um, use it so since I have oops, extra I want to show you let's see maybe I have enough for another one so I'm going to use this pad, it's pretty sturdy, and uh, I was trying to pumice, um, pumice, and I think I bought these years, years ago at Ace, I don't even remember, I think, I don't remember, so this is pumice, it's very, very fine, uh, they are different um, grease, so you can buy it, um, very fine and you can also buy it very coarse and I have bought these too that is glass beads if I add these I'm gonna have a little bit of a different texture so since so, and let's see how it turned out But remember with the pumice, if you have uh, the pumice and uh, powder and you want to use gesso, any kind of gesso, um, you can do that too. Ooh, you can fill the beads. I'll try to put it closer so you can see, but you, uh, everything you, you hear this sound is because the the spatula is going over those beads so I like to use that squishy uh, tool you can find others with more texture oh now let's see how it looks it's a totally different feeling from the other one more texture here more so I, I bet it's gonna be more challenging to work on this it usually is That's it.